Uh, my question is, returning to the gold standard, as you mentioned, no country right now is on the gold standard, but you said that you think that in the future, uh, countries will go back to the gold standard. Yeah, I mean, when, um, when we left the gold standard in 1971, Richard Nixon said it was temporary. I mean, that's what he said. I mean, it wasn't his intention. So, so just to yeah. finish the thought. Um, so looking back, many, many countries have been on the gold standard in the past, and every single one of them has ended in the country going off the gold standard. In the UK and in Germany and during the Great Depression, it was because they just ran out of gold. Well, they didn't have enough gold to cover. So what makes you think that if a country were to return to the gold standard in the future, they would be able to maintain it and it just wouldn't end in them going off the gold standard yeah. like it has in every other circumstance in history? Yeah, well, the reason it's not that they run out of gold. See, they don't want to allow deflation. They don't want to allow prices to adjust to the quantity of gold. They would have. So, no, so politicians, they, they don't run out. Um, so politicians don't like the gold standard for the very reasons that Bernanke laid out. It prevents them from selling snake oil to their constituents in exchange for their votes. The politicians want to pretend that they can spend money to solve problems. The gold standard is in their way. So it's the politicians that want to remove the gold standard. Ultimately, it's people that are going to want it back. People want real money. People want sound money. Now, the last country that went off the gold standard was Switzerland. I mean, they, they held out the longest. But one by one, all the politicians followed our example. We led the world off the gold standard. We're probably going to lead them back, not necessarily because we adopt the gold standard first, but because we destroy the dollar in their reserves. And they have to replace it with something. And so once we've destroyed the dollar, the question is, what does the world do? To replace it, are they just going to take the euro? Are they going to take the yen, the China, the RMB, or are they going to go back to the dollar? Remember, the reason we were able to sell the world on the dollar as the reserve, as opposed to gold, because everybody was using gold, and we said, "Hey, use the dollar instead of gold." And basically, what we said is, we own all the gold. We've got 90 plus percent of the world's gold anyway. Where did we get all that gold? We sold products, and they paid in gold because they didn't have the products. They didn't manufacture like we did because they had bigger governments than we did. So we had all the gold. We were the world's biggest creditor nation. We, we had investments all around the world. We had massive inflows from our foreign investments. We were by far the wealthiest creditor nation. And we said, look, hold dollars. The dollar is as good as gold. You don't need gold. You've got the dollar. You can have your gold whenever you want it. Just bring $35 to the treasury, and we'll hand you an ounce of gold. In the meantime, you can get paid interest on your dollars. You don't get paid any interest on your gold. So we convinced the world, based on the strength of our balance sheet, based on the dollar being as good as gold, to take the dollar as the reserve. So when, 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 when this whole thing collapses, the most likely thing is that we go back to the way it was before the dollar became the reserve currency, not that we simply replace some lesser flawed fiat currency uh, for the dollar. Can I follow up? Yeah. Um, just when you said that the United States had all these foreign investments that had gold coming into the country, inflows of gold during that, during that period. But we had income from our foreign investments. Right, right, right. Of course. So if you kind of follow that to its conclusion, which happened during the Great Depression, if the dollar, if the United States is so strong, if any country is so strong, that there's continuous inflows of gold into the United States, eventually the United States will have all the gold. And nobody else will have any gold. They'll well, have. well, and then they'll well, end up off the gold standard. No, no, because no, that. because what's going to happen? Then we're going to have to start using our gold to buy some of their stuff, and the gold will flow back out. But you know, it, we're, because like, can we make book builder, like, can we buy well, look, if the if the world ran out of gold the, theoretically, right? Well, then we would just produce stuff for ourselves. If, they, they, if we're going to export something, the world has to pay for it, right? Um, you know, so it, it, it isn't a problem. The problem is the fiat standard. I mean, gold <coughs> standards have worked historically for hundreds of years. I mean, the founding fathers do this. These were smart guys. They put us on a gold standard for a reason. They studied history, and unlike Ben Bernanke, they not only understood it, but learned from it. And so they put us on a gold standard, and, and, and it served us very well. We were a tiny country. You know, we were an afterthought to Europe uh, in, in 1789. We were a few million people, you know, here in the New World. Yet we, we created a society in, in just a hundred year time period that we created a standard of living well beyond anything. In, in, in Europe. How did we do that? We did that on a gold standard. We did that with no government, with a tiny government and freedom. We were freer than all of than Europe, and so we prospered uh, more than Europe. You know, we came in with this, with this, with, with, with the fiat standard. 
you know, we started in 1913, but we didn't really go off it until 1971. Look at the disastrous result. Look at the collapse of the value of our money. Look at skyrocketing prices. I mean, look at before the Federal Reserve came into existence in America, if you were a man in this country and you didn't even have a high school degree, you could get a job, your wife could stay at home, you didn't have, she'd have to get a job, you could support her, you could have four kids, right? You could save for your retirement, you can buy things, you had a great standard of living. Now, if you're, you know, there's no way, I mean, you, you, the average man, can, even with a, with a master's degree, his wife has a job. And they have to delay even having one kid until they're in their late 30s because they can't afford to have them because they're drowning in debt. And, you know, and, and, and even when they have kids, what, it's one or two kids, and they're struggling and they have no savings and they're deep in debt. So we have destroyed the middle class that, that, that freedom and the gold standard built. And the Federal Reserve is a big reason for that. Then we just uh, screw the rest of the world. Well, the rest of the world is going to have to you know, raise its living standard and produce things and have it. But how does debasing our currency help us? It doesn't help us to debase our currency and sell our stuff for less. Right, but we have all the gold. Let's say we're on a sound. So you're telling me there's. So we own all the. What about we could go buy up some Greek islands? You know, We could go buy up mansions in Europe. Maybe we're interested in investing so you don't, in the United States. But you don't think anybody would want a house on the Riviera? You don't want? You don't think anybody would want to take a vacation and go to Europe but, and spend some money? I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. Why, why would we ever have all the gold? Because it's always there are always going to be other countries okay. that have competitive advantages to to, for us to but trade it's with. It's taking it to an extreme. And if we're trading, there's going to be money outflows. Look, and the experience gold, it's, of it's, it's the experience of the post-World War One period economically was that the United States was very strong. That was yeah. The United yeah. States was very strong, and everyone was on a gold standard. So all this gold was flying. Yeah, but, but it, and it was great for the United States, yeah. but it caused all these other countries to go off the gold standard. So if we were, that's not why they didn't go off the gold standard. They did, they, everybody was on the gold standard until we took them off. <laughs> Germany and the UK couldn't no. continue convertibility. They, 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 the UK they went off the gold standard in the 30s. Yeah, right. But it wasn't because of us. It was because politicians in Europe didn't yeah. want to let the, the British economy yeah. destruction. Yeah. They didn't want to let the deflation. Yeah. 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 Explains all that. I've read the monetary history.